Hi, what? Hello, 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 hello. Hello. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we are here to talk about CSERT Global, uh, which is a movement to try and make the internet a better place. And to be able to do that, we're going to need a bit of help from everybody. So, quick timeline and who we are. So, I'm Dave. This is my good friend, Jared. Uh, we are members of CSA Global. Uh, we are two of the chapter leaders for the UK chapter of CSA Global. In terms of uh, the history, uh, way back when, there was cool movies and there was stuff like that and I did a whole bunch of really stupid stuff and brought an auto teller down and nearly died at Y2K and essentially up to 2017 we weren't in cyber. Uh, I was in IT, Jer was... Insurance fraud insurance. investigation, not you know, application. Uh, no, uh, the application <laughs> of insurance fraud. Yeah, the yeah. not the application, yeah, yeah. the so investigation <laughs> of application fraud yeah. insurance. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I switched from IT to cyber. Uh, and essentially, well, a lot of it after WannaCry and having to deal with these sorts of things. Uh, and Jer met the hacker guy from the telly, so mm. uh, he got inspired to come and join. Uh, I then went on to work for the managed security services and actually then started managing socks and things like that. So uh, then pandemic hit and a lot of us all started drinking in Zoom. Yes. A lot. Friday nights were good. For yes. Good time. Uh, That's where we met. <laughs> We also started doing various different volunteer things. I was part of this COVID-19 cyber threat coalition that created block lists of people that were being using the COVID, using COVID as a method to attack and do like nasty phishing schemes and stuff like that. And over time, JR came and joined. And at that point, we kind of move into where the group Dividay came along and then as a spin-off, CSERT Global. So, what is CSIRT Global? So we all know that the internet <laughs> has problems. Uh, it has many problems, but what we're actually talking about is the fact that a lot of tech was built without security in mind. It was make it work. Uh, Fast. <laughs> and then what actually happened is the internet exploded and then people started hacking bad all these things and then you get all these massive vulnerabilities we had like cves coming out of our ears and basically people are attacking everything now a group of volunteers called dividi out in the netherlands actually banded together to actually go out and search so whenever a new vulnerability would come out they would scan the internet because nowadays it doesn't actually take that long to do that which is scary in itself uh, and they also did their own research uh, but they had a problem that if they found a problem with a company, it's like, hey, Jer's company's got an exchange server that's like, you know, like going to be attacked by Hafnium. Uh, if a bunch of Dutch guys tried to phone you and said, hey, you have a problem with your thing on the internet, uh, most people don't respond particularly well. Mm. So, uh, trying to build a global movement to help with the disclosure of vulnerabilities and actually help make the internet a safer place but this requires people, which is obviously where you come in. So, we all know that when the internet was young, it was built uh, by really badly dressed people, uh, and everything is about profit. Uh, so, the number of CVEs, and there was an excellent talk recently at B-Sides Newcastle about the number of CVEs that actually get disclosed now, the number is horrendous there's absolutely zero chance that you can patch everything if you had all that software. But what we do have is a bunch of people that build tech to make it work, but didn't think about security. And we all know this is a big problem. The European Council's are all trying to sort this sort out and pass laws. But in the meantime, what we have is a whole bunch of tech out there, things like webcams, printers, and all these sorts of things. Things that are in people's houses, things that are in companies, that have problems, and we know about them, but we want to try and get them to fix. So, we also have a really weird trust problem. We trust no one, because we're in cyber, and that's what we do, uh, but your average company and your average person in their house trusts everything. Everybody's trusting 8.8.8 for their DNS, 
we're all trusting Facebook with every single detail in all our favourite movies and exactly what our date of birth is, what our kids' names are, what our pets' names are. Uh, and my mother's maiden name's on there, and I like to put the last three digits of my credit card on there too. Uh, and the kids' birthdays. Kids, kids' birthdays, kids' parties, where your kids go. Everybody trusts all these bits of tech, and they become ingrained in our lives, and they're normal. I mean, my own kids understand technology, and they run about as, like, I think when they were six and seven, they were running around pretending to stream things. It's like, hang on, how did you get to that when we can't even get this set up to work first thing in the morning? But they're running around streaming. You're like, this is insane. <laughs> the other big problem is, uh, well, cutting and pasting from the internet. It's your, uh, everybody going to Stack Overflow to find that problem and that fix or hey someone's created a library it's your open source software supply chain which is also a nightmare log4g uh, and then you have the we have people that trust all of this but if you try to tell them about the problem and help them without trying to charge them money for it they don't trust you is it hang on no no if you're not trying to get me to give you money to help me then you must be up to something. And so bizarrely, the people that are at, should be trusted can't be trusted, and the people that actually we should be looking really hard at don't necessarily. So uh, there's another problem with disclosing vulnerabilities across the world, which is, one, we all know that we have real law problems in terms of thinking. In this country, we have the problem. In every other country, they all have their own sets of laws around the internet and about disclosure. So you have, in some countries, it's like illegal to be someone that's looking for and scanning the internet for vulnerabilities. So you have this massive issue where if you are sitting in the Netherlands and you're saying, hey, there's a problem over there in the UK, but we're in the Netherlands, we don't know UK law, we don't know the culture, we don't know the people, how do we actually then effectively communicate with companies over there to get them to fix this big problem before they get hacked. So, uh, if you look at it from a law problem, you have law, it's a social thing as well. And at the moment, nobody has responsibility for any of this. Unless the company wants to stand up and take responsibility for the things, nobody does anything about this. There are some absolutely horrendous CVE stats that you can go out and look at how many vulnerabilities in particular bits of software. Uh, there is an actually really, really good blog at the bottom of this about who controls the internet, and it's like bizarrely fascinating because I read, I went into a thing, hey, I'll read this, and I like, yeah, I know, it's going to be the big tech companies. Oh, there's a ton of really random thoughts, and oh, right, actually, yeah, it's thingy, but yeah. We'll get that so, tweeted out after yeah, the yeah. talk. <laughs> so we do have this big ass problem where the tech is broke nobody will trust us and we have no idea what the laws are in our neighbouring countries because there isn't a law that deals with the internet so this is where we all step up well oh no you can <laughs> 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 I'm not going to trust myself with a clicker today um so this is where David A stepped up. So 2019, as David touched on the timeline, a um, bunch of volunteers led by Victor, who is you know known around the community for sense checking Trump's passwords twice, um, and then checking on other vulnerabilities as well, scanning the internet, and just trying to make the place safer. And that is their, you know, that is their motto. It is make the internet a safer place for everyone else. Let's make it a better place than the way we found it. Um, so you'll know them from research like Kaseya, uh, Solarman as well over the years. Um, so essentially what they'll do is when they find out about the vulnerabilities, if they haven't researched it themselves, they'll do their research and then they'll scan the internet looking for it. And then that's where um, we'll step in. But obviously they come up with their own problems now. They're trying to do this amazing thing. They find you're vulnerable, but you don't want to talk to them. So, you know, some people half a percent will go cheers the one person that goes oh i'm new in the job i will read that email and go oh this looks amazing 
and then pump it up the line and someone will probably go, you know, go away or we're going to sue you. Um, and that's only, you know, the 1% of people who actually read the emails because what you'll generally get is 99% silence on all these emails that they send out, which is unfortunate because at the end of the day, they're trying to do a good thing, which harkens back to the trust. People don't know a Dutch group who are reaching out, you know, ringing America, ringing someone in the UK going, you know, we don't know what's what's going. So this is why they want to expand. So Divide will turn to CSIRT Global and then have chapters around. So what we're looking for is to build up. So let's build up trusts. Let's build up chapters. So myself and Dave and Scott, who couldn't be here, are the chapter leads for the UK chapter. Um, We'll look to build those around the world, so we'll contact, we'll be responsible for looking out for the UK people and having them come to us and chat. Um, but also trying to extend it across different sectors so that you know, we can build out the information and just make sure that everyone is actually aware of what's going on. Um, but also endorsements, no blue ticks involved, but it will be a case of you know making sure that no one stays anonymous. You know, If people are going to be involved in the program, we need to know who they are because you'll be dealing with sensitive information. Um, so we do need to be able to say yes. I know, I know Dave, and I trust Dave, and we can vouch for him being a, a safe oh, person. Um, but also, the working with the chapters will mean that it will feed into the law elements of it as well, because we'll be more aware of what the legal requirements are in the UK for disclosures, whereas the Dutch have a different way to thinking about it. You know, they're trying to do good things; they're not doing anything illegal. It doesn't work that way over here. It won't work that way in many countries. So it's just about building through from there and just trying to, as I say, make the place better. Um, so that in itself is the vulnerability. You know, there's only so much the Divid A can actually, you know, they'll scan the space, but they'll only cover a small bit. The UK chapter will then cover another little bit. But then as we build our, you know, our connections with the sectors, then we'll start to fill in all these gaps. You know, let's plug the holes. Let's catch as many of the vulnerabilities as we can. And you do, you do see this, like, uh, especially in Twitter. There'll be the. Does anybody know someone that works for X company? And then somebody will reach out because Twitter is already quite a good network. And when you build yourself a good network, it does actually work like that. The idea here, though, is the right. If you can build up a good enough network and connections, you've got your local ones, and you go the hey. Even if we didn't have someone in Argentina, somebody knows somebody, and then we can start there. And then if we're going to have a lot of problems there, you can try and encourage maybe that person to start the chapter, sort of yeah. thing. But with all good things, it's not easy. It takes effort. It takes volunteers. It takes people dedicating their times. I know Divide meet every single week for several hours. You know, it takes up their time. They're willingly giving up their time to make it better for you and me. Um, and that's what we ask of our volunteers to just give up a couple of hours, see what they can do to make the place safer. Um, so this is essentially where we've introduced ourselves. Um, we are their pilot chapter. We know some of the people in Divide. A. They thought, right, we'll make you our guinea pigs or crash test dummies, and we'll see how we can develop it. Let's break things as we learn things, because at the end of the day, we're all hackers at heart. Um, so we'll, work, we'll make something work, and we'll try and do it the best way possible. Um, we're looking for people to help volunteer. Um, people will be looking at if people are interested in doing research. You know, that's something that can be looked at, or even just being on the comms to say, you know, oh, if you see something to do with X, Y, Z, please put us on that list to let us know. Um, but it is, you know, it's going to take a lot of work. It is going to take people's time up, but it's a volunteer thing. So it's just what people can give. Um, you know, everything is welcome. Um, so I will we'll build it the way we can. And you know we'll learn from that with everyone, um, but that is obviously where ev or where the volunteers will come in. All right, hopefully you know we'll we'll sell it well. Um, you will definitely get experience. Um, the amount of things I've learned over the last couple of years, as Dave said, I'm quite new into cyber, and there's such a lot of things you can be exposed to in a very short space of time. It'll accelerate. A lot of people are in this; they don't want to be bored. You definitely won't be bored being involved in a volunteer organization like this because everything that they will be looking at will essentially be very new um, and everyone will be asking questions about it and you'll be at the forefront of there. So you'll get certainly good experience, plenty of international friends. There's a bunch of us that turned up to a, a wedding a couple of weeks ago and most of us had never met in person. Um, and yet we're a really close knit group of friends, which is great. Um, and there is always the, the support and because it'll be global, there'll be support available all the time. 
um, because someone will be awake, you know, without having to be awake at 3 a.m. It'll be, you know, 10 a.m. in the morning for them, which will be a lot nicer for, you know, waking up the following morning. Um, but we do want people who do want to make the effort, you know, people who are prepared to commit to giving, you know, time on a regular basis rather than an hour, you know, once every six months isn't really going to make much of an impact. We want people who are really keen to kind of regularly yeah. meet and regularly engage um, and just fill it out. And there will obviously be a, a code of conduct and values, as I was touching on about no one will be remaining anonymous. We need to be able to vouch for people. Yeah. So we can't have, you know, X, you know, has reported this. It needs to be that people's names will go against it to say we can validate this person's credentials. To it say it, it is the, the key difference between our Twitter network of Twitter friends that can, that can do a difference. And actually, you're going to be exposed to vulnerabilities, some of them incredibly serious, in big companies in your country, which is the, that circle of trust that we're trying to build is, is huge. And that's why you can't just drop into Twitter because just because you followed the guy for a year doesn't mean that you, you know him. And so the volunteer group will end up being there. Yeah, you know each other and the various levels of trust to basically build it up. It will be the, there's going to be an awful lot of potentially sensitive information that, that goes past. When they did the Kaseya stuff, there was an awful lot of older stuff happening over there and we know that they can't talk about it. And so we literally have friends that suddenly went, hey, look, sorry, I'm really, really busy and I can't talk about it. Uh, this is about expanding that level of trust into there to sit and say, hey, we're really, really, we've just found this uh, bug in something that's big. Nothing can go out until we manage to get this released and get a patch or a mitigation in with a supplier, etc. So the guys and the entire team from Divide and Kaseya, that was an interesting night for them. Uh, and then the rest of the world, because as an MSSP, we had tons of customers with Kaseya, and you're like, ah, oh, crap, and you're <laughs> checking it. But it, uh, it was an interesting one. Yeah. But yeah, so there is a code of conduct, which is not something you normally have in your kind of various communities and stuff like that. It's not just a, hey, be nice to each other. It's a, hey, you're going to get information that you literally cannot share. They cannot, you're not looking for people to go, hey, I know something that you don't know and brag about it on Twitter. It's a, no, no, this is serious. We need to, there are ramifications if this stuff gets out. So we did mention our Twitter friends. Be our Twitter friends. We have our CSR Global UK Twitter feeds for people to join and connect to. Um, the chapter leads, myself, Dave, Scott, reach out, ask questions. You want to help, please. You know, we're more than happy to get as many people on as possible. Um, but also, big shout out to Victor and the rest of the Divid A CSR Global team. Vincent, Leonard, Marielle, Chish, Witsa, Edert. Oh. Um, <laughs> Well done. <laughs> yeah. I went for I, it. I would have you just, just have to go. The, ah, the yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you so went for it. Apologies. Yeah. yeah. Um, and to the supervisory board as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, get them all followed. Get them looked at. Ask questions. They're the friendliest people going. Um, so and the, some right. of the smartest people you'll ever come Yeah, it's kind of... It's, it's just sickening, but, you know. You'll, you'll find it intimidating <laughs> to start with, but they're awesome people. So it's, yeah. it's, it's all good. We'll definitely Cool. Learn. And that's us. So any questions? That is us. Yes. So, I will, I will mute mine, and if anyone has any questions, I can run around with a handheld mic. Oh, we have a question, so I will run uh, down. There's a handheld, yep. Yeah. yeah, epic fail on the crew. <laughs> Thanks Hello. for the talk. Um, so, can you hear me? Yeah, say, okay, turn. great. So, I can't hear it. <laughs> Yeah, Actually, what would be a good volunteer for you? Would it be someone in who is in education, like a university, or would it be a big company or individuals? Who would be all a good? All of that. All of that. Uh, okay. So ideally, uh, you'll have a bunch of people that have really good connections and stuff like that. But also, as, as like, if if you're just needing people to reach out to, to companies, as long as as long as that trust circle is there then yeah I mean ideally yeah if you've got like government contacts local government uh, local councils and all that absolutely fantastic but you're also going to need general volunteers and let's face it as we move people through their careers 
if you come in as a uni student, but then in a year's time you're working for Facebook or Adobe or HP or whoever, that contact list keeps growing and growing and growing. So we are open to everyone because we're friendly and nice. Yeah. And and you now have only um, Netherlands and UK, right? Yeah. Big okay. chat. There's a big talk. Like. The guys have been across the places like the States and stuff to start looking at building chapters. What we're trying to do in the UK is test it, test that the, the, I mean, we've already had like multiple Slack chats about the code of conduct and exactly the wording and saying, hey, you need to tweak that there. Because again, you've got a, a, you've got a bunch of Dutch speakers trying to create an English code of conduct version and you go, hey, that didn't translate right. Yeah. So immediately you go there. That's why you need local chapters because when you look at it, you go, "Hang on, yes, that makes sense for you, but can we change it here?" And then they go, "All oh, right." And sometimes they then go back and change their ones. You go, "Oh yep. yeah," right. but sometimes it just doesn't work in the local language. So hey, you just have to sit and go, "Right, yep. okay, review it." So every chapter has to take that. Like one of the first jobs is going to be taking that agreement and making sure it works for their local cyber community uh, and laws. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah. Hello, Sue. Cool. And with that, I think we are done. Unless yes, I think we are finished. So if Ian that. wants to come and join us again. Thank you.